Hello, and welcome to part two of our three-part video series on zeta potential analysis. Today we're going to be discussing how to make a zeta potential measurement, and also discussing some other practical concerns as well. Our talk today is going to be centered around a Melvin Zeta Sizer Nano ZS instrument, which is a very popular choice in both industry and academic labs. Instruments from other manufacturers operate on similar principles and should follow fairly similar procedures for testing as well. By far the most important thing to consider in your quest for good Zeta data is sample preparation. In preparing a sample for Zeta potential analysis, you need to consider size, conductivity, ionic strength, and sample concentration. According to Malvern, the Zeta Sizer Nano can detect particles with diameters between 3.8 nanometers and 100 microns for Zeta potential analysis. There is a very strong relationship between the diameter of a particle and the intensity of light scattered from it, so concentration requirements will vary. This table provided by Malvern shows the recommended sample concentrations of different size ranges. Note that the table is modeled after polystyrene latex, which has a density of around one gram per cubic centimeter, so your sample needs may vary proportionally. When a sample has insufficient signal, the resulting measured zeta potential value is low in magnitude. Low signal is indicated by mean count rates that are below 100,000 counts per second. This can happen due to a sample that is too dilute or a sample that is overly concentrated due to a phenomenon called multiple scatter. At high electrolyte concentration, the electrodes inside the zeta cell will begin to corrode. For this reason, the instrument reduces the applied voltage to the cells and only an average zeta potential is obtained, rather than a full distribution. Malvern refers to this as a monomodal analysis mode, and it is automatically applied to all samples with conductivity values over 5 millisiemens per centimeter. Although measuring materials zeta potential in high salt media is often necessary as it pertains to certain applications, it is best minimized for routine analysis if possible. To monitor cell degradation, be sure to check a reference standard frequently when making multiple measurements of highly conductive samples. We will be performing this demo with Melbourne's most commonly used consumable product for zeta analysis, the folded capillary cell, part number DTS 1070. Firstly, be sure to use some deionized water to rinse the cell of any dust, residual sample, or contamination from previous uses. After rinsing, give the cell a light shake and a tap to make sure that the water has been cleared out of the cell. For sensitive samples, it can be a good idea to condition the cell by filling it with a small volume of sample, allowing it to incubate for a couple minutes, and then disposing it and refilling it with fresh sample for testing. We find that sample volume of seven to 800 microliters to be the most convenient for filling these cells. If you try to use much more than that, then what happens is that the sample is going to overflow when you go to fit it with the two stopper caps. When you're ready to fill the cell, make sure to carefully and slowly uptake the sample with the pipette. Insert the pipette tip in one of the two open ports of the zeta cell and dispose of the sample slowly and evenly, making sure to keep an eye out for any bubbles or any voids of liquid that form in the cell along the way. To that end, it can be helpful to tilt the cell slightly when adding your liquid. Visually examine the zeta cell for bubbles and other voids, and be sure to tap and flick the cell as necessary to dislodge them, as they will impede the flow of sample during the measurement. Plug each end of the two ports with plastic plugs. If using a Malvern disposable capillary cell, note that the cells are not symmetrical and be sure to place it into the instrument with a Malvern logo facing out. When inserting the cell into the instrument, be sure to do so slowly and carefully and make sure that you can actually feel the leads on the Zeta cell making contact with the electrodes on the instrument. If a sample measures with extremely low zeta potential, conductivity, and count rate, this contact is the first thing to check. Within the instrument software suite, navigate to the SOP of interest or manually configure the measurement as necessary and press start to begin your measurement. Measurements can often take more than a few minutes, 
So be sure to return and clean the Zeta cell afterward by draining it of sample and then rinsing with deionized water. While the sample is measuring, pay attention to the signal or count rate, attenuator setting, conductivity, and quality factor. We'll cover this and more in part three. Well, that concludes part two of our Zeta Potential series on how to make a measurement. For more information about Zeta Potential theory or data interpretation, be sure to check out the other two videos in the series. For information about submitting a sample of your own for Zeta Potential testing, be sure to check out the Characterization Services landing page. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in more characterization videos.